All right, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Joe, and again, I am an ordinary dad, ordinary gamer, and I am playing the new early access game, Darkest Dungeon 2. Um, this game is available on Epic Games. It hasn't dropped on Steam yet, um, and uh, it is uh, early access. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, Darkest Dungeon 2 is the follow-up to Darkest Dungeon 1, which was made by uh, Red Hook. It is a roguelike, turn-based RPG with Cthulian elements where essentially um, your characters are trying to prevent the end of the world or a cataclysm uh, by, you know, Cthulian um, lore, but they are constantly getting stressed out, warped, turning on each other, being mutated, so on and so forth. Um, so, I guess with that, um, I should say that um, this is pretty dark gothic artwork for for folks. So maybe maybe uh, you know, spoiler alert, uh, this is not one for for kids to watch because um, uh, there is some pretty pretty grim, think you know, like aliens, like uh, grotesque art. That's that's that is beautiful in its own way, um, but certainly not for for younger eyes. Um, and certainly, you know, after the, after the, my kids went to bed, you know, my Lizzie interrupted my earlier um, have a nice death run, which is you know just kids a game or whatever. But uh, probably this isn't one for the kiddos to go play. So Darkest Dungeon One, I also played during early access, and um, it's essentially um, you are um, balancing three different resources. You're balancing your character's hit points, if they lose their hit points they die, you're balancing their character's stress, if they got maximum stress they could die, you're balancing a global research, Torchlight, where the lower the Torchlight got, the more strong the monsters got, but the more strong your own characters got. And it was a expedition-based roguelike where you would go out on 80 to 200 expeditions, which were each half an hour, an hour long, and you continually go back to your home base and um, uh, get your group stronger, saying, assuming that your characters weren't going insane or weren't getting killed or what have you, and it was, it was brutal. The vanilla was brutal, and the early access was brutal uh, from Darkest Dungeon 1, and I did play, um, I did play the vanilla, I played the Crimson Core, and I played the whatever the, uh, the Comet Falling uh, patch was in Dark Souls 1. Play, so, very familiar with the, the genre, the concept, and some of the characters' moves and abilities. So, Dark Souls 2 um, went in early access a couple months ago, and the first I played it was last week. So I've done four runs of this. Um, the, there's a couple of differences. The first is that um, you have no, at least in this access point, there's no overarching campaign. They sacrifice, you know, those 100 to 150 hour-long runs where you go out to different dungeons and different movies and uh, get treasure and defeat monsters for in exchange for one single, uh, you know, three or four-hour run that constantly resets from the beginning. And the roguelike component is that your team. You know, as you, as your, I guess your account builds experience, um, which is hope, so hope is the experience in this world, um, you uh, get more things unlocked and you really get stronger. And so, um, uh, for people familiar with Darkest Dungeon 2, or Darkest Dungeon 1, they'll see a lot of elements that are similar in Darkest Dungeon 2, specifically the combat and the balancing of hit points versus stress. Torchlight. Um, there is the overworld is more interactive, so you see that I have a carriage here. This is my torch represented there, um, and uh, you can do things in the carriage. Pretty limited, and, and a lot of players are crying that right now it's kind of a waste of time to be in, in carriage mode, if you will, for your overland travel. Um, but the biggest difference is that instead of balancing the three resources of Torchlight, uh, hit points and stress, you are now balancing like seven resources. Um, the, the newest big addition was 
uh, relationships in between your characters. So previously your characters um, could go insane or they could uh, be, you know, become valorous, become heroes. And based on that, uh, there would be an exchange of, uh, you know, stress going to hit points or hit points going to stress. So extra stress could cause hit points, but if you were low stress or you became a hero or, or valorous, you could heal hit points. So there was an exchange of the currencies that you're trying to balance there. Those exchanges all still exist in this game. Uh, the relationships are how the two characters feel about each other. You can affect that. Um, that affects hit points, stress, torchlight, everything else. Torchlight affects relationship. There's also now a fifth uh, resource, which is called um, uh, it's like reaping or woe or something. It's in the top left corner. Uh, I'll show it to you when we get there. Um, but essentially, you now are trying to balance six. Uh, interchangeable currencies which any of them can kill your character and they all feed each other and, and what it ends up being is that um, you spiral very quickly in the run one way or another um, with either all of your currencies working out well and boosting each other up or all of your currencies working out poorly and having the run wipe. And so the first two runs that I did of this I've done four runs of this so far. The first two runs I did of this, um, all my currencies, I, I wiped, I wiped pretty, I crashed and burned pretty hard. I did a third run where, uh, based around you know maximizing, maximizing relationships, and I did a full clear. Um, and I did a fourth run around maximizing relationships and fourth clear. So this is my fifth run now. So I've had two successful runs and two. Um, uh, crash and burn runs. I do feel like I have a pretty good understanding of the combat mechanics and, and all the how all the different relationships work together. So I'm going to try this run on camera now that I know what's going on. Um, after my third run, uh, after my first full clear, I did um, look up a few things, but but really, really not a lot. So I'm still pretty naive to this game. So you guys can be experienced with me. So anyways, this is the character moves. The first thing, um, is that you can change the sensitivity of the carriage that does turn Across the easily. Wait by the so the first big change is um, in Darkest Dungeon 2 you had a bunch of characters to, or Darkest Dungeon 1 you had a bunch of characters to select from, just like Darkest Dungeon 2 as you can see here. Um, however, um, you can only have one of each type and the characters you select uh, remain in the same line formation and the same for your entire run. So the same character, same line formation in your entire run. If you lose a character, um, is the but very don't wipe, so make existence. it to the next checkpoint, which are pins. Um, um, it, it is possible to gain one of the other characters since you've unlocked back, um, but um, um, in general, um, you're going to be stuck with these characters the whole way through, and you're going to be upgrading these characters as they go. So, one of the things that um, becomes very important is their actual stats of these characters. So they have given abilities for each run, and you unlock more abilities as you do more runs and as the hero shrines. But the um, the actual stats here are specific to the run, and so you're looking for um, Abilities that are going to be good for relationships. In my opinion, you know, the two successful runs I had was focusing on relationships and making sure that everybody was happy with each other. So you're looking, you're trying to avoid things um, that are bad for relationships. So these are the the blue, the blue in this game are, are bad for relationships. You don't want damage subtractions like crit skills gone. Um, and the, the yellow is, is the good abilities or the attributes in this game. So you're looking for things like positivity or, or friendliness or, or something like that, which says that they're going to be very good for relationships. Um, lightning reflexes is good. Um, that's fine. Squeamish is... Um, can't, can't use something with a squeamish. So Braggart means that uh, uh, if he if somebody else starts taking kills, he gets or she gets upset. The play doctor so is a female. So I'm not seeing anything particularly brilliant in these skills one way or another. Um, and I'm sure you know somebody might say, "Oh God, sickly is, is horrible." Um, but um, um, 
cowardice means you want to run away from fights. That's very bad for relationships because it means where everybody else wants to fight, you want to run away. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, uh, two tanks. So the men at arms and the leper are both tanks. The leper can do some damage as, as well as the men at arms. And then two DPS uh, in the back lines uh, for the grave robber. Plague Doctor. Um, speaking of relationships, the most powerful relationship is Amorous, or your characters falling in love with each other, so uh, I always find that, um, and by always I mean the four runs that I've done, um, uh, that it's nice to have uh, two pairs of male females. I'm not sure if males and males and females and females can fall in love in this game. No idea. I'm also not sure if you can fall in love with multiple people this, each game. I can just tell you in the last two successful runs I've had that my Plague Doctor paired off with my Man at Arms, and my Grave Robber paired off with my Leper, who, lore wise, is actually a king. So, we're going to go with this comp and uh, see if we can get a full clear for you guys. Um, now that I picked that comp, that's what I'm stuck with the entire run. So, that will be my um, uh, comp fighting. So the road is yours to this travel, is kind of the overworld map movement instead of alone. moving across the corridor like you do in Darkest Dungeon when you move here. It is interactive, so if you hit these debris, you can get lots of um, different. Um, An inkling of potency still lingers in some of these well-worn relics. Not a bad start, to be honest. So storage tank's good. This is good for removing negative corks. This is good for increasing. Um, Relationships. So you're going to see me spending most of my gold in the first three zones. On Between build, semesters, we would spend our days rambling the woods, once that happens, talking excitedly each other, of esoteric stress, theory start, and ancient you know, mysteries, um, doing more damage, coming to each other's aids, everything else. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing is uh, trying to make sure that I have a good relationship with everybody. And how does that work for encounters? Well, you see here that. Um, when you reach a new encounter, you're going to see that the exclamation marks mean that they have something they want to say about it. Down below is, um, you see the bread and food and plus 50 torchlight, what they would gain from the encounter by taking their path. And then, when I hover over one character, if another character turns gold, that means that he agrees with the decision, in this case, to help these people, um, and that he will gain two relationship points with the character. So these guys don't care about helping these people at this point. Uh, you know, this her being austere and him being honest means that they do want to help the folks and um, they will gain relationships with each other. So by taking this, um, I'll be improving the relationship as well as getting these people. An unexpected so find. The food that we see here. So I'm take the food. And then See, this is this section is actually the tutorial section, so it just shows you how to use your carriage, how to go through uh, encounters, what the relationship modifiers or encounters are, and then how to how to fight the battle, which is the last thing you know, the road battle. The but, point uh, of no return welcomes you. Um, so darkest dungeon With open um, arms. It's it uses gothic art, but it is somewhat, it's got its own style, it is somewhat cartoon. You see, a lot of uh, even your games have tried to emulate this to um, spreading thing. style, either you know, things as simple as flash games, or um, actually, uh, you know, things like um, uh, Vanguard and uh, Eridus, Lord of the Dead, and other things have, you know, had this like, cartoony drawing for these like very dark images so you can see this like gone zombie thing and, and all their names you know her name is widow <laughs> like um, in terms of this interface if you hover if you see top right here you'll see that um, you see the order of the turns so everything's laid out who's going what war so first gonna be my plague doctor then it's gonna be uh, my grave robber and then it's gonna be the first whatever these guys are called And then the widow, um, and then presumably the last widow. And then here you see exactly what the uh, ability does. So this will. Oh, this is interesting. So it's apparently kept my buffs from the last run. 
So, I'm not sure. I think that's a bug. I think you're supposed to start over on every run, but these blues mean that um, I've upgraded the ability. Um, so this is only supposed to do 4 damage at the beginning, but it hasn't done 6 damage. Uh, it's a damage over time. Because she didn't keep any buffs. So, this is literally the same Pericles? Um, I'm not sure. That's, that's got to be bug. For some reason, my... Um, my... Uh, Plague Doctor still makes max upgrade from my last run. That, that's that is not right. So, most monsters die from hit point damage. There's no such thing as monster stress damage. Um, but, um, so you kill them by removing the hit points to zero. So, your characters will have five different uh, things to choose. Um, and in the bottom left, it shows exactly what all these abilities do. So for the Leper, his current abilities are uh, hit the guy really hard, uh, take away any corpses, uh, taunt, so this is please please attack me, but you're buffing up your armor resistance beforehand, and then heal, self-heal, self-stress heal, and self-stress heal and remove uh, the blind debuff. So, the debuff you see here um, means you have a 50% chance of missing, so when you hover over this guy, it will tell you you have a 50% chance of hitting, 50% chance of missing. This is a huge upgrade from the first game, which a lot of not only the debuffs and buffs weren't written uh, out or spelled out easily for you, like, oh, there's a 50% chance of hitting, you would just swing and you would miss, um, but also... Um, so a lot of the debuffs and buffs were happening behind the scenes, but also um, that uh, everyone starts with a 100% chance to hit, and the first game had a lot of RNG that led to more deaths from crits and misses and everything else than the second game does. The second game has a lot more scripted out, um, so that is a welcome relief here. So because I'm blind, all of my attacks, you see, um, add blind to myself, so you see in the bottom left, self-blind. 75%, so normally the rotation of the lever is to first um, uh, attack and then clear blind, attack and then clear blind. I mean, there's lots of things that clear blind, but um, I'm just going to attack and these guys are really not difficult. And so, I don't, I really don't know why this play doctor is still maxed out, but I'll take it. Get me wrong. That's it. That's the last thing we have to do is kill him. So this is a damage over time. So this is a good time to talk about um, the two of the resources I was talking about earlier. So hit points. Obviously, the hit points goes to zero. Uh, you don't die automatically. You have a death roll check, and if you fail your death roll check, the next time you're hit, the next time you take damage, then you die. So you have a 10 to 20 percent chance of dying if your hit points go to zero. Stress is um, if stress goes to 10, you lose a ton of hit points and you lose a ton of relationship points and you lose uh, a lot of a lot of things. So you don't automatically have a heart attack in this game if your stress gets to 10, um, like the last game. But uh, it's uh, it's it's you know permanent damage to all your relationships if you have a, have a mental break. So it's very undesirable. So those are the two things you're balancing for your heal for your heroes. Torchlight again, the lower the light, the more chance that they will actually have damage to you. So now she goes into the first row. And all of the attacks, you can see that there's two yellow dots out of four and three red dots out of four. So the two yellow dots represent the position that my man arms can use this attack. So uh, defender can use if he's in any of the four positions that you see here. And then the red dots represent which places he can hit. So this naturally means that some folks are more suited to be to the top, towards the front, so this guy, all his attacks work in the first two rows, um, 
but he only has you know one attack that will, two attacks that will be very back of all, and some folks are more suited for the back. So your own positioning and where the enemy is positioned becomes good. So, the main strategy um, the past is to take gone. out high priority targets, Let it die. And make sure um, that you're, you're doing your damage, which for me, the easiest way I found to do the damage is, is damage over time effects. So, I use a lot of poison, not so much bleed or burn, which are the other damage over time effects here. Oh, that's not um, But, um, the actually, roaring heart does much for the weary body. Even more, perhaps, actually, for the restless soul. Damage over time effects. So, here, this is the character screen. Basically, it gives you a good idea of everything you're balancing. So, you're balancing hit points, you're balancing stress, and you're balancing relationships. So, right now, he has no relationship with anybody. These two should be friendly with each other uh, because they did participate in that. Um, decision together to help the people. So they are friendly with each other. They are four, four out of seven. If I can get them to seven out of seven, then they'll develop a relationship um, where they will um, uh, help each other out with stress, attacks, healing, everything else, depending on the relationship. So the main goal is Precious to get them relics remind us of a time before the end. Visions that he has for us. Not really anything. Um, to help with relationship building, which is the priority right now. So we do have cards. So these cards you'll see give a positive relationship to folks 75% of the time and a negative relationship 25% of the time. So it's a gamble, but you know, it's it's a net gain overall. So we are going to have it's the flash period is the relationship got worse. So almost everyone's relationship got better. And now if we look at the relationship after the card games, um, Everyone gained one with each other except for these, except for my two tanks became one blue. So now these guys are one away from being, or two away from being best friends. So one more decision on their way and they should be best friends. And then this removes a 67% chance for removing negative quirk. So I don't know why Pericles is still maxed out. No one else is. Um, so all these mean, all these blue means he's max upgraded. Awesome, I'll take it. I did, like I said, I did just have a successful run, so maybe that's part of the chain successful runs together. Um, but right now, I'm looking for who has the worst um, quirk. And so for Pericles, you see that 10% of the time he's going to taunt. And if you're wondering what the symbols mean, you can push G and bring up all the symbols. So taunting literally means enemies are forced to attack this target. So my mage will force people to attack him 10% of the time. So that's pretty bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use him. So I used it, and two-thirds of the time that will remove that ability. So that's now gone. So now I no longer taunts enemies to attack him. So that's a pretty bad ability. Now, the... <clears throat> goal here is to buy items which um, either the these use until next in items are super helpful um, so they um, they're a buff that lasts essentially the entire dungeon and can be super helpful and then the um, relationship items are the priority um, so what we're going to do is we're going to see where we're going Everywhere to have. in ruin. Uh, Everywhere in need. We can go to the Tangle or we can go to the Footer. I like going to the Tangle. Trenches um, and Tents. It's not a great the matchup for me. There's a lot of, of Blight war resistance that was never there. Fought. I am a heavy Blight deck, but uh, uh, there's a lot of Blight damage there too. Um, so we are going to take, there's no real bleeding in the tangle, so this is kind of a waste, um, but we can build, buy it for later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two ropes um, 
for dodgeballs later in the game. Learn what master can trainer, be taught. So, so that I got that one master from the first battle. That at allows the me end. to upgrade one skill from anyone. So you have to choose carefully who you want to upgrade and what skill. Um, for me, the idea behind this build, and again, my Pericles is, is maxed out, um, is to taunt with the two front items to leave my mages free to wreck them um, in the back. So I am going to take the taunt skill retribution which taunts twice you can see at the bottom when it's upgraded taunts twice counters twice and gives them uh, two bonuses as well uh, other high priority is um, obviously healing damage and getting um, uh, getting the other dot damage up to four so poison dart will be the next highest priority so our goal is to get as many mastery points in this next run as possible, um, and that will help us go a long way. So we do have trinkets. Trinkets are go into uh, the equipment slots of the uh, heroes here. So because this is my taunter, I want his hit points to be as high as possible, and because we are going to the forest, I want him to be light resistance. So I'm going to give him both of those. And then this gets put on to the planning wagon. and so mindfulness you your wagon down as vital to survival as sharpened steel. Go on the wagon. I'm gonna add this, this will serve well. And we are all ready to go. Just have to put our combat items, which are quite a fact pretty useless. So the combat items, um, they are one-time uses in combat. They do not use your character's turn, so your character can use a combat item and attack. So things that you know damage the enemy or whatever can be useful. Things that help each other are even more useful because those can build relationships. So um, right now, my uh, two closest to getting a relationship are my two girls. So it is my plague doctor and my grave robber or my mage and my thief, if you will. And so I'm gonna leave the uh, item that targets other players on my Plague Doctor with the hopes that I can build a relationship there. All right, and then we are ready to go. So we've done all of our things, everyone's ready. So we are going to embark. So what I'm looking for is a way to gain as much mastery as quickly as possible. Each this is the first of four dungeons that I'll face on the way to the final boss of this run. Um, and it's War. a zone where you see, Rewards um, you only. get a map, and some of the places are filled in, and some of the places are not filled in. Points of interest for us, we're looking for resistance encounters where we have to fight enemy, harder enemies that give us... Um, that give us mastery and reduce loathing. So, loathing whispers... Um, this affects stress and relationships quite a bit, so you want to get this as low as possible, as early as possible. The way you read this map is, if it's a yellow line, if it's a solid line, um, that means that there is no attack halfway on the road. There's no road encounter, which would be the old corridor encounters before you get to the next room, which is now these areas. Um, and so if it's a dotted blue line, there is a road encounter there every single time. The road encounters are different than the encounters at the end because the road encounters require you to um, Sorry about that, let's get rid of this. The road encounters require you to defeat the encounter within five turns. So they're timed encounters that uh, uh, you have to defeat quickly. So now instead of choosing which quarter you want to go down, you're going to choose the road. When you approach, you'll see that your people will express a preference of which way they want to go. And if you go the way that they want to go, then they will lose a stress point. If you go the way they don't want to go, they'll gain a stress point. So you'll see, by me going to this resistance encounter, I'm going to gain two stress points right here. You will fight so that others may flee. Now they are already forming a relationship they want to, so it's very good. I just need one. He's stressed out, so this top is him losing a stress point. So I just need one more decision that they can agree on, which will form this one right here, and they will form my first relationship. So they do not agree on this decision. Uh, but these two, 
and what I get, you know, they both say fighting, fighting. Um, ideally, I didn't pick my actual abilities, so I'm going to do that now. Get purge. Pick, have to pick the right abilities here. Otherwise, uh, sorry. So, uh, and then he's not going to take the other one. He's going to take this. So, um, these two are the relationship here. When they have, when it's the sword there, that means they just fight. If they have bonuses or negatives for their plan. So you can see, here. so you can see the resistances. You can see the resistances for the folks that I have over. So all these folks are pretty resistant to blight. They're very resistant to blight, and blight's my main attack. So you can see that this is not the best. Uh, the third is an unavoidable end. So here's 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 the purpose of the building. So he's going to draw all attacks. To him. With that, he has. Decrease the damage taken, and he's putting on counter attack, so he's effectively uh, taking a massive amount of damage. A promising development. So he's going to clear all of their points and their stats, so I'm getting more of their block attacks. And also, he's dishing out damage, protecting the edges, taking damage. Now, will he take damage? Absolutely. Um, however, um, the mages can also heal him. The archer in the back, usually your back targets are your priority um, as they um, actually deal the most damage or have or have to. Gonna do the same thing. He's gonna grab both their attacks and funnel all the damage here. And you'll see that I'll be able to heal all his damage up um, efficiently. Whereas everybody else, it wouldn't be able to heal efficiently because healing is based on percentage of life. And since we gave him an umbrella that gives him the most life, um, he has the highest percentage of life. So we want him to get healed, so healing comes from her. So I'm going to delay uh, until I get my... Uh, he's actually... But uh, I'm going to wait for the doctor to go first before I kill this last boss. It's important that you end the battles when you want to end the battles. Now he's going to attack me and he should finish. There's that death door mechanic. So, monsters can have death door mechanic too, and all that means is that um, they uh, do not uh, die uh, right away either. It's kind of wonky, but it means it's way harder to die than you think it is for this one. So, the other thing that's important to know, the one pleasant in the extreme. Map. We're trying to farm master. This right work now. is noble um, and necessary. Um, so that's very helpful. The other thing the that um, is important to note is that your hit points recover in between each station. So looking ahead, this is another resistance battle. So we'll get another master there. We have two road battles there. And we have a hero shrine. And we have another road battle. Road battles in level one are not that bad. And then our other choice is a mystery leading to the shrine and leading to an assistance battle. So I'm going to go for this resistance battle again. Um, and I want to hit that and go this way. So now that I'm on a broken Perhaps road, you are I'm going finding to run into your courage at last. Right in the Now this is a time fight, so you'll see fights at the end of the road you have no denominator to the fight. In this fight, we only have five rounds to complete it. So you gotta complete it fast, and the rewards are not as good. Um, so there's a lot of reasons to actually 
avoid these fights because they can be damaged without really good reward. Uh, but it isn't really that resistance fight, so that's something terrible for us. So we're going to put our reputation on that. And you see, his hit points are fine. We can do this all day, essentially. Now these guys do do some uh, resistance damage, which is not ideal. But, uh, you know, we'll take a little bit of resistance damage. So already we have five rounds in the first round. As long as this, uh, as long as he's, you know, he can't even be helped by being above, uh, well, he's above, um, 50% hit points, he can't even heal him yet, he's not low. Steady so, yourself. So. so I'm actually going to just roll the dice here and see if I can this much. I could do that's because I was blinded by my previous attack. That's okay. Now for him, I actually don't. It's a really good reason to take another hit here. So the the smallest go. variable can make all the difference. Again, I can't do it by the so it's 50% health, so these, these healings will go away by itself. So they heal up again. Cut down these nightmares. Uh, but and the road encounters the to are easier. Redemption. You only have five rounds to deplete them, and they don't give you any. So no mastery points there, um, no help. But we're gonna do uh, this uh, resistance encounter. Uh, uh, just herself. Let's see if we can get a choice between a cultist and a rogue for this resistance encounter. Not. And in fact, he wants to run away. He doesn't want to fight it, so that is not optimal. So these two are the ones that are in sync. So I am going to pick. I think they both have equal relationships with. Oh, he's actually pretty good with her. So I'm going to take the one who's higher up. He can afford to have more of a hit with the mage on his relationship than he can. Um, so I'm going to give the hit to them. And uh, we'll, we'll take me accept that hit. Um, we'll still be positive. So this is a cleric slash healer. This is a, uh, I guess, a buffer. I love the way this guy sounds. I love him beating on his drum. The, the artwork is really cool. This, a slow dissection. This guy can actually raise people. So An unavoidable end. I 
ironically, it's very beneficial to be low on my mind. It's easier to heal yourself. This goes through So now that I'm above five stress, I can actually get rid of that. Also, I'm not going to do my talk this round uh, because I desire um, uh, talk Bravo. this round. So I the can rely only upon each other. this drummer, if this drummer's the last one alive, then he fights, I'll uh, get a lot of this uh, hit points back. So, hit points are probably the least important. Cut down these nightmares and blaze the trail to your redemption. So, the Grave Robber got a super good item, but we did not get lost your points. So the loathing of baits. So you'll see that the health as I drive will actually continue to go up. 
Look ahead. A place to reflect, remember, and reconcile. So, again. Ooh, okay. Here we go. Uh, I do magic against this pretty well. So he's already taking 8 damage for 3 turns, so that's 24 damage. So it's half his life right there. I'm just going to take this guy. Cooperation is the key. Of the unprepared. This guy, so we hits going back to the pages. You can see the off tank works pretty well for the dribble. Okay, we don't know it yet. This is about to attack him because he has a counter up himself. And heck, like. Survive with the uh, death door check. Pretty close. Pretty close to that. Blood stream. So I'm going to wait one turn, so she's just going to put herself some breath on. Heal off, and hopefully heal us if we must. So. Cut down these nightmares. Not too and bad. And blaze the trail to your we redemption. We don't have a, another battle for a while, so we'll get our health back still. So again, I can't stress to you how much like health you need. So we're at 25. We have another road battle after this shrine, but we'll probably be able to get fine by then. Shrine is so these are permanent unlocks for the stories and characters. Me, I've been working on the leper, I've been working on the plague doctor. Um, there's obviously a um, optimum path to unlock. Each time you unlock a piece of their story, you unlock a new ability as well. So obviously there's an optimum path of which abilities to unlock when. Um, no idea what it is. Um, but I've done a little bit of all of these except for the grave hour I've never unlocked. Because I think he has a Chapter four. hitting frontline ability. The Purge. Some of these actually go into battle mode where you have to do the battle. So the leper he story had shown is his compassion. He was a kindly king, his lord. Now he, was a kindly he king. would show his fury. Was hugging his people and committed, got contracted leprosy, and then now all of his advisors are turning against him, so they're all attacking him. So. Some of these fights are supposed to win. Just 
Acceptance requires honesty, painful as it might be. I was supposed to win that fight. Okay, I lost that fight. I was supposed to win. Okay. Well, I'll come back to that. It looked unwinnable the first round. I guess not really this the first round. We can rely only upon so, each other. So if I take the cow, get these guys down a little bit, and then In crisis, we can rely only upon each other. Impeccably timed. The slow suffering begins. Challenge what you can, and be off once more. So we just move. Not particularly useful. Can use it on the creatures, but... Alright, so, I totally messed up that leopard fight. I'm not supposed to win that. Let's go for the next year, So this is a necessary stop. Um, 
get items and you restore your flight which affects the real monster, but also big for relationships that choices you make here so looking still for these two. They do not have a relationship choice together. So after that I'm looking for maximum flame and that's this thing here. So in this world, wealth is worthless without purpose. So, another resistance encounter there. Maybe a cultist battle. Is there a cultist battle? I don't know. I could do resistance encounter here with this, and that's the lair. I actually don't know. Or I could gamble so it's down this path. is the bishop and the drummer, but we're getting taunted every round, so we can't turn. <laughs> A breakthrough. Can rely only upon each other. Collaboration confers advantage.
A brilliant conclusion. I can take some. Dissection. An unavoidable end. We can rely only upon each other.
what matters most so, if you don't is kill we reach the mountain. Anything, you know, like a, Alive, <laughs> if possible. Uh, not the end of the world. Certainly annoying all the time. Such a view is matched yeah, so only now, by so its own awesome. settling awfulness. Seasoned soldiers were deployed to a winding front, meant to prevent the cult's descent from the mountain. So the layer is the mini dungeon. There's three battles that get the best group on this. Um, there's a boss on the third battle. Within I every keep, a general and his loyal lumbering guard. at least has been tended to. generosity, but a welcome one nonetheless.
another impediment, cleared with impunity. Crisis. We can rely only So the Grave Robber has a strong heal too, but she has to be below 25% or 33%. She can't heal herself because she's too hot. So, now, we go on the round two so you can decide whether or not to proceed or not. I will proceed. Round two is exactly the same as round one with the same kind of strong This is all fantastic. Let me see if you get a healing between the rounds. A slow dissection. An unavoidable end. rely only upon each other. We can rely only upon each other. Now you see if I keep on going, um, there's massive rewards for the last guy, so this is the boss. Um, and trinkets cost 75% less. I cannot kill that boss. 
Oops, so I when myriad that. variables align themselves against you, so this is it is wise to desist. Very helpful, so I will equip that to my balance right now. I'm still trying to nurture Pericles' relationships, so I will put the stress heal on him so he can stress heal. Well, I don't really like him too much more. Alright. A simple choice. So, At least it should be. Off tanking or off taunting, very helpful to keep the mages completely safe. Battlement and the vexation. In crisis, we can rely only upon each other. at least has been tended to. So I do like the off tank, it really feels like that's just a Variable easily resolved. A slow dissection, an unavoidable end. Pleasant in the extreme. This work is noble. At this point, how necessary. Get a um, relationship buff from this last encounter. So I think I'll be back to that. So we'll put it on. It's just a little bit of a sense, but I think I'll be back to that. So what the hell? Get our hit points and get our resistance, not the relationships. I do want to fight this, so. And that uh, plus one person means we start with that kind of stuff. Oh, this is. Section an unavoidable end. Oh, 
Calculated generosity, but a welcome one nonetheless. <laughs> Steady yourself. So Flame, burning brightly for all the world to see. It's not a bad trinket, to be honest. Fine on hit points, doing fine on stress.
little help impeccably timed. In this world, wealth is worthless without purpose. Smirking betrays a malign madness. Let's go to in items, and we have whiskey bottles, so we can increase relationships there. And these are amazing chocolate candles. Relationships. Incredibly necessary acquisition. So, auto taunt, not bad. Uh, range damage, not bad. for hit points. Alright. So I got a bunch of in items. Think carefully. Today's oversight is tomorrow's regret. of the same stone, never one without the other. So that will give them bonuses. Relationships that we have now, we have one good relationship and pretty good on these two, too. So, I wish Dr. Stone well. We've got a problem with our grave robber. So, we just got a problem with the night rounds. The night rounds are not doing well at all, so he's going to have to focus on really helping with that. Which should be probably lots of relationship damage. So 
these are the curios. Yeah, I can't say the curios the first game. Not sure how skewed they are towards me to evil. It's only a very hard battle. A rare and impressive collection of folklore, ancient wisdom, and sinister secrets. Forgotten. It is ours now. Wow. That's kind of amazing. That gives two to everyone. Alright, so now we face the area boss. So the area boss is similar to the lair. You can keep on going down and, uh, as far as you want. And there's three battles, and the last one's a cultist battle. I'm not sure if that counts for actual reality uh, comes to thunder before our eyes. Quest, but uh, hopefully it does, because that'd be too much for us. Yeah, so there's just. Brilliant conclusion. Start. Take that. is the key. See, so this is a positive ability, so he just healed her for 12. Six for 
relationships, once you get four six relationships in a group, then the group just is constantly healing itself, constantly stretching out itself, so on and so forth. So, on hit points. Again. You can see even one relationship, that's how often it rocks. So you can imagine with everybody having a relationship with each other, a positive relationship with each other, you get uh, lots of benefits. A brilliant conclusion!
haste and carelessness. All marks of the unprepared. of the unprepared. So relationships can cause stress or normal damage. Um, it's pretty bad, but you can't, you can't go the other way too, so it's not all such a Collaboration confers advantage. Insidious beers. each other. is gone. Let it die. Nice. We 40% damage. That's very nice. Oh, it does count as a cold spell. Okay. So there you go. Alright. So we gotta get rid of a lot of stuff. Just 
that one too. We've made it. So, I will descend. Get up our strong, get up our relationship as much as possible. So we get all our relationship pieces. To get up our relationships. Save all the night. And then we'll continue this run. So, that was only the first um, zone. But um, there is. Um, Rest I tonight. Just, took a lot of time explaining. Under the mountain's unblinking on. gaze. So, here you also see. At the end of each zone, you automatically get three more loathing. So we got our loathing count down to zero by facing all those battles, but at the end, we get three more loathings automatically. So you gotta keep your loathing count raw, low. Wow, I guess we should go to the sprawl next. Wow, okay, these are really good. Okay, so now we're gonna check everyone's relationship status and see who. Benefit from relationships the most, so apparently is pretty close. Wow, really. So Pericles is pretty close to them. So, okay, so we're good. It's one, two, three. Um, first, I want to do this. Alright, so can fall still beats. So Desire they, uh, will never fall. die. Um, so that's great. And then this. So now. Wow, he's really close with both of them. Still beats. Desire will never die. And he's friendly. And true. All right. So love triangle. So is he? he is friendly with Pericles. So. Oh my god, everyone's in love. While the heart still wow, beats, this is like the love train desire right will <laughs> never what's die. The, that's what's the uh, the entrance. Alright, so right now, taking stock of our relationships, we have he's in love with everyone. Our men at arms still needs a lot of help. Everyone's in love. Pericles is perfect. Our men at arms is the issue. So let's see what Precious relics remind us of a time before the end. So, one. A bit of comfort on the road to damnation. One relationship, and then all of these are good. It's good to collect uh, Something to ease the, the rigors so of the road. Alright, so what do we got? We got coach upgrades. Planning and mindfulness. As vital to survival as sharpened steel. Dark Lord, uh, 
So, on to our masters. So, Listen. from all of our farming, Practice. we have six masters. Improve. Use, which is awesome. Pericles is already maxed out for some unknown reason. This is the next priority right here. And then we really want to max out all the healing abilities. Bolster is the next priority. That goes to minus two. Um, Defender um, goes from normal to improved. So that's really good. Back to Leper needs his withstand. Is, um, so I'm going to be healing 50%. And can't trace so of our land. Tons Crumbling of folks. and undone. Right. Sprawl scrounger, sprawl explorer, quick draw. Tons of folks want to be in the sprawl. Sprawl is an easy boss to kill. So we are going to go to the sprawl to get our layer boss kill. Keep flame at 40. Stuff. So we're gonna go to sprawl. And Another nameless and city. And Another so inferno of mutilation and madness. Head forward a little bit. Um, if you exit the game at the inn, then you have to redo all the inn items. And, um, you can't cheese. You can't cheese the game. Behold, the great actually, cities um, of man. Redoing your relationship items and a until flame. you get good relationships. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna leave here with of the six we have two, three, four of the six relationships completed. Lots of love. So the love train, the love wagon is going on its way, and we will continue this uh, run uh, later this weekend. So. I um, hope you guys are all having a great night. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching a little bit of Darkest WG gameplay. I will show you the last two regions and hopefully the uh, mountain boss kill uh, on the next run. Uh, thanks and have a great night.